is the move like you get a little bit of bread, you dip the meat in the sauce, and then you eat it? Wow, how do you know that? I am oh. kind of a food expert. Uh... Chinatown. When I say the word Chinatown, you probably think of the one that's nearest to you. But Chinatowns in general seem to exist in nearly every large metropolis around the world. It seems like no matter what country you go to, you will stumble upon a Chinatown at some point. They're everywhere, even in the US, New York, Chicago, California. Today I'm in Chinatown in Ho Chi Minh City. This looks gorgeous. Is there any wrong way to eat this or you just mix it up and do what you want? Sorry, mm, it's an awkward time to cough these days. The impact of lockdowns due to COVID-19 has already devastated the restaurant industry globally. But Chinatown seemed especially hit hard. Essentially, the lockdown is over in Saigon. People can go out to restaurants. But what do you think is stopping people from going out now when there haven't been any new cases for three weeks in Vietnam? Today, I'm in Saigon, Vietnam, exploring the food. This one, he's hollowed out a chili. Uh, I'm gonna try this one. No, I'm not gonna try it. You're not gonna, no, why? And the people behind the food. Is she the one walking around delivering the food? Yes, yes. This is Chinatown in Vietnam. Peace, tranquility a place to walk in stride with your thoughts and contemplate life. If that's what you're looking for here, you've come to the wrong place. Saigon is a city that never takes a break. Energetic, tireless, a constant roar of motorbike engines creating an unending drone, even where you might not expect it. Saigon's Chinatown is no exception. But if you break away from the main streets into the alleyways, you may find your respite from the city's symphony of exhaust pipes. A moment of peace. Well, almost. football-shaped pork buns are a local beloved breakfast food introduced to Vietnam by Cantonese immigrants so long ago that no one can remember when they weren't here. They're called ban bao. This vendor delicately whips up her daily batch made from scratch backed up by over 40 years of experience. Stuffed with salted egg, quail egg, or cha su, or sweeter options like taro puree and egg custard, all made by the hands of Miss Lick and her family. Finally, I get to break my own fast with a steaming hot cha su bun. I'm gonna peel the paper off. Yes. Oh, it is super hot. It's very steamy. Yeah. Newly steamed bun bao. Let's try it out. Mmm. It's so mm. thick. There's so much cha su inside. I like it because it's like a little mm. sauce in the middle of the bun bao. It really has like beautiful homemade quality to it. Mm. it makes me feel happy. I know I love it. Joining our food adventure today, Koi, a young local who grew up in Chinatown. But more on him later. She said that the dough, she make by traditional flour. So this one, they still have the thickness. Right. Now, a lot of pork bun shops, they have a very big assembly line. Yeah. So right. they're using yeast and it's very thin. Right, beyond that, inside is very savory, meaty, and it's almost just like this cha su gravy. Oh, it's very nice. Who is your main customers here? Is it people who knew your shop from before? Is it just neighbors who happen to be walking through the alley? At first, she has so many difficulties because people don't know her. One day, she got reviewed on a Vietnamese food reviewing group on Facebook. Mm. So, lots of people go here to buy. Wow! Yes. So, is this your own recipe or where did you learn this recipe from? Saigon's Chinatown was born over 300 years ago, settled by Chinese immigrants, also known as the Hua people. Here, they're recognized as Chinese Vietnamese. Chinese culture has deep roots in these streets, churches, temples, houses, 
commonly seen Chinese businesses and not so common ones too. One of their best offerings, at least for me, the food. It's unlike anywhere else in the city. Some younger generations inherit recipes that go way, way back. But some, some got to figure it out on their own. And boom. Good morning, sir. How are you doing today? Good morning. Hey, all right. Should we just do the interview in English? I don't know English. <laughs> you don't know English? No, okay. <laughs> Here, this is Kung Fu Mi Gao. Basically, a Kung Fu noodle. Yeah. What makes it a Kung Fu noodle? It's art, it's craftsmanship, it's food in action. Mr. Tan is a young, ambitious Vietnamese chef who decided to start a career in Chinatown three years ago. Using the skills he mastered over a decade, he now turns some of the most basic ingredients, flour, eggs, and water, into some of the best food anywhere. Are there any other restaurants doing what you're doing here in Chinatown? Yeah, so there are only two. Well, we got to knock out the other competition. Where yeah. No, would I? Happy. <laughs> 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 All right, I was just kidding. Um, if anything happens to them, it wasn't me. Are you from Vietnam originally? Yeah. But you decided to open the restaurant here in Chinatown. Why is that? Yeah, they làm và anh có vợ ở đây. Ah, his wife is originally from this area, the Chinatown of Saigon. Vợ người Hoa. His wife is Chinese. Ah, okay. Something broke me that day. Between you and your wife, are there any cultural differences? Yeah. Like, what are the best fights that you have over something cultural? Không, không. Tại vì vợ anh là người Hoa nhưng mà sống từ nhỏ ở đây rồi. Nói chung là cái phong tục tập quán cũng giống như người Việt. À, nhưng mà vợ anh còn nói tiếng Hoa ở nhà không? Hay là không nói tiếng Việt luôn? Vậy hả? Okay. Today we've come for the best on the menu. Fresh noodles made from scratch, paired with mustard greens, a generous portion of dumplings, Chinese marinated and dried squid, shrimp, more squid, and the meat parade continues with pork heart and tongue. Next, a fish ball, a slice of cha su, scallions, fried shallots, a special homemade sauce, and finally, to bring it all together, the broth. What I'm looking at in front of me, I yeah. mean, this looks like heaven. This is gorgeous. So they've got a little bit of everything. This is yeah. uh, some pork. Yeah. What is this one? This one is very special. It is a very Chinese ingredient of the dish. Is the, it the beef, squid? A squid. Squid, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna try that first. Yeah. Is that crunchier? It doesn't feel like squid at all. Like usually squid like that would be chewy. Oh yeah. And it's made it kind of solid and crunchy in a way. It's like a sea cucumber almost. You hate cucumber and... Uh... No, but it's, it comes from the sea. Okay. Like it? These dumplings okay. are flipping huge and fantastic. Super savory, dense meat inside. Like just chewy clumps of dough on the outside. I want to try this broth too. Good. It's not like super complex, like yeah, a pho yeah. broth, but it's like salty, savory, mm -hmm. and just kind of straightforward. Yeah. And these noodles have been hanging out for a little while, and they're not clumped together, they're not soggy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mmm. Holy shit. I couldn't find anything to complain about with this. These noodles are outstanding. Like, dense, thick, they've got character. Like, they have some hardness to it. Oh, okay. You know, I don't like a mushy noodle. Oh, I see. Right? Bro, how much is this? 55,000 dollars. Oh my god. If you were in like New York, this would be like $15. Really? Yeah. Grew up in Chinatown, mm. but you are a Vietnamese, right? Yeah. Is it just random that you ended up in Chinatown? So my ancestors are from China, mm. which is way, way long time ago. Okay. Yeah, so 17th century to oh, be exact. Yeah. That's really long. Ago. Really long time. Mm. But most of the people, they do not know about their, even their ancestors are from China, just because our family name is, you know, like sort of like indication you're from China. But then, lucky my family got a shrine, so I know what time they came to Vietnam. But my grandparents speak fluent Vietnamese, so I would consider myself a Vietnamese. Of course. You've been everywhere in Ho Chi Minh City, mm -hmm. but how is Chinatown different from other places in Ho Chi Minh City? It's extra busy. 
the street is always crowded. Lots of business, like food or services. This Chinatown is known for its busy atmosphere and heavy foot traffic. Tourists and vendors pack the sidewalks, congesting the throughways in the morning and afternoons. But these days, Chinatowns across the globe are taking on a new type of pressure. Chinatown, like most places these days, is pretty empty. In Oakland's Chinatown, that some restaurants that would normally be packed on a Saturday night are closed instead. In the U.S., restaurants in New York's Chinatown have reported sales drops of between 40 and 80%. There are down 80%. Even before lockdowns, New Yorkers and tourists stopped going there. 14 years, she's never seen business this bad. Likely due to an irrational fear of getting the virus. Vietnam's Chinatown has been affected too. Are you aware, like all around the world, people had stopped going to their local Chinatown? I mean, yeah, I'm totally aware of that. Yeah. Did you experience the same thing in Chinatown here in Saigon? Yes. He said he experienced like not so many people go here as usual mm. before the COVID-19. He thought that because people are afraid. Okay. That's why they didn't come here. Do you think, were people afraid of Chinatown or were people just afraid to go out in general? So he thinks that people are afraid of going out in general, right. not just the Chinatown. Okay. Yeah. Food delivery is the band-aid restaurants use to stay in business. Restaurants already set up for delivery fared much better. And some still found a way to give back to their community. She don't want to sell like overnight products. And if she cannot finish that night, she would give all of the pork buns for charity. Oh, wow. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so right now, we're in a different part of Chinatown. There's a huge market here. What is the name of this market? Yeah, so this is called Udo Market. The next guy we're talking to, he's right over here. Yeah. He's so busy. After he makes a few more bowls of food, he's gonna jump into this interview. Yeah, no sweat, no sweat. Tucked inside a residential section of Chinatown, you'll find this place. Wet market by day, street food factory by night. Delivering a diverse, delicious selection that could take you weeks to eat through. This vendor has been here for 25 years, offering a wide range of homemade, steaming hot goodness. Meet An, the Chinese-Vietnamese owner who runs this place each day. You have five minutes here? Five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're the busiest guy I've ever seen. Yeah. You grew up here? Yeah. How long have you had the food cart, though? 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. What is your most popular dish here? We call Yuan Fu Gua Lan Jiu. It's me like putting like fish into uh, the tofu and yeah, tomato. You know, they name all of the ingredients. Like the name, it's literally got everything. But basically, it's fish cake stuffed into vegetables of many kinds, like bitter melon, eggplant, chilies, or tomatoes, all put in a bowl with fried tofu and a bubbling pork bone broth. Is this food, is it Chinese? Is it Vietnamese? Is it something else completely? What is it? It belongs to like Chinese food. All of your food here, is it all 100% Chinese? I mix with a Vietnamese flavor mm. because it belongs to their taste. Right. People in Saigon or people here in Chinatown, what flavors do they like more or less? The Saigonese, uh, I think, yeah. they like sweet and like spicy, I think. This one, he's hollowed out a chili. That's a real chili. Yeah, it looks gorgeous. I'm going to try this one. No, I'm not going to try it. You're not going to? No. Why? It's, um, I, I, have, I have not tried. Out of the darkness and into the fire. It's still spicy. Are you serious? Yeah. You must think like ketchup is spicy. No. <laughs> no? Chili no. sauce, huh? No. To me, it has a great fresh chili taste. Yeah. It's a little bit warm, but not too crazy. Because it's so cooked that it cooks all the spice out. Not that deadly spicy, okay. but yeah, still a little bit spicy. You were talking to him about this whole corona thing, how it affected his business. What did he say? He said that uh, during the coronavirus time, people like they buy take away more because he's on like food delivering apps. One little positive thing that he feels happy about is he don't have to do the dishes. No more washing dishes. That's a good outlook. Are they all stuffed with the same stuffing? Yes, it's fish cake. I'm gonna try this out. Bitter melon. 
Oh, this is like old people food. They don't call it bitter melon for nothing. That is very bitter. Yeah. The fish cake has a great texture inside. Yeah. But wow, is that bitter. I like bitter melon. You're an old man? I think so. Mm hmm? What's great about this is he's given us like a little sampler or bowl with all kinds of different versions to try. There's one in a tomato. Oh. The tomatoes boiled down a lot. Yeah. So it feels like you're having some meaty tomato soup as you bite into it. Mm. That's really nice. I'm confused because it's hard for me to tell like what is Chinese, what is Vietnamese. Yeah. How do you tell the difference? For me, the Vietnamese eat more raw vegetables. Mm. And the Chinese, they prefer everything is cooked and stewed for a very long time. The lines between Vietnamese food and Chinese food has gradually faded over time. Kids born in this generation consider this Vietnamese food, but it actually has roots originating in China. Along with pork buns, noodles, and one special treat I can't fail to mention. <clears throat> Deep breath. Oh god, I'm so full. Xin chào. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're at your shop. Here you're selling pho, pho lao. Pha lao. Pha lao. Yeah. This opal stew can be made from pork, beef, or even duck. But here, at Mr. Tom's 40-year-old takeout, they're offering patrons the OG Chinese version of pha lao. What is the difference between Vietnamese pha lao and the more Chinese-inspired pha lao? He said that the main difference is the way they make it. With Vietnamese pha lao, they add coconut cream to make a very creamy soup. Right. And for this one, he just cooked with soy sauce and so many different kinds of traditional herbs. Already cooked in a medicinal broth. Stomach, tongue, womb. Wait, that can't be right. Is that right? Ears, intestine, chicken feet, duck tongue, literally the opposite of whatever you'd expect. It's all on the menu here. We kind of asked for just a mixture of everything they had. Yes. It's like a greatest hits album from the 90s. <laughs> We've got two different types of tongues here. Yes. I like that. There's a menage a trois of farm animals. What is that? Going on in here. You're speaking French? Yeah, it means like a three-way. Oh, oh. Uh... <laughs> That's really good, really tender and full of flavor. The marinade for that meat is delicious. They slow cook for a long time, so right. that's why it's really tender. Mm. Yeah, juicy. I've had duck tongue before, but like, do you think they sell chicken tongues anywhere? Uh, chicken doesn't have tongues. Oh, chickens definitely have tongues. There is? Yeah, look, but here's I, a I picture think... right now of a chicken with a tongue. Yeah, see? Okay. Oh, now I know. <laughs> Low fatty. Very rich. The oil from the tongue coats your mouth. Do you like intestine? Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, it smells pretty good. Put the intestine in some sauce. Put all that in the bread. That's going to be a delight. It's so chewy. It's very chewy. That's quite an adventure. Powerful but nice seasoning at the same time. Chinatown in Vietnam. I learned that food here is really damn good. I mean, I've always said never doubt Vietnam when it comes to cooking. Yeah. And it's no different here in Chinatown, of course. I mean, China, they have many distinct cooking styles, mm. culinary styles. They're masters of cooking over there. Yeah. But same thing here in Vietnam. The streets of heaven, where silence is good. You can hear the angel whisper song. And doves are rising. To the unknown Cause this is my daydream When you're home Within a few months, for these restaurants, it'll likely be as if the corona lockdown never happened. So he's still allowed to open the shop during the lockdown days. Okay. And then he just make less. Is he still making less now? No. Yeah, so back to normal. Back to normal. Back to oh, that's normal. great news. Yeah. Some restaurants specializing in delivery weren't greatly affected, and others will bounce back in time. Yeah. So he strongly believed that after the COVID-19, people will start to come back, mm. and he have a very good life motto, which is never give up. Mm. And he really believed that hard work pays off. Yeah. That's what he hoped. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And inside this home, the water flows. I didn't know what to expect from this particular Chinatown. In New York City, the Chinatown feels like a different world compared to its neighboring boroughs. But here in Saigon, it's not really like that. Charging the line. Do you have any speculation, any idea? Why is it different in New York, where yeah. Chinatown was suffering uh -huh. way ahead of the virus getting there? 
And in Vietnam, no big deal. Standing close. My personal thinking, because in other countries, they are like the first generation or the second generation of the Chinese immigrants. I think a very important thing is the Chinese is recognized as one of the minority group in Vietnam. Mm. So it is a part of the 54 ethnic groups of the Vietnamese right. for a very long time. Folks in Chinatown and in the rest of the city largely share the same culture. What's different is celebrating, usually in a bowl with some broth. Walls of fear are breaking down. At last, I see the road I follow. Did you know actually Vietnam has 55 ethnic groups? 55? Yeah, the 55th one is expats. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's you on Wikipedia. Yourself. Really? Yeah. I thought you recognized yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's weird, yeah. right? Yeah, it's very weird. Though. I don't know. Maybe someone made that up. Yeah. From researching and shooting to editing and mastering, our 10-person best ever food review show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. Guys, that is it for this video. I want to say a huge thank you to my dude, Koi. Give me an air handshake. Don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. Okay, good. <laughs> that is it for this one, guys. We will see you next time. A peace. A peace. All right. I'm very full of Chinese food right now. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs>